parental fatigue, burnout. If you're feeling this, we get it. But there's one thing we use when we're feeling depleted. It's called Rehydrate. Delicious electrolytes that increase blood flow to your brain, organs and nervous system, boosting your energy without anything nasty. Magic. Next time you're feeling flat, give Rehydrate a go. Available at Coles. This is the Happy Families Podcast with Dr. Justin Coulson, where Luke and Susie, a husband and wife radio team with three young boys. This is the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants some answers now. Our next guest is a doctor of psychology who writes for the New York Times and is featured in Sydney's Daily Telegraph, The Project, The Today Show, and of course the Luke and Susie radio show, a closet middle-aged man in Lycra and our family and parenting expert from happyfamilies.com.au. Please welcome father of six daughters, Dr. Justin Coulson. That bit gets me every time. Six daughters and Whoa. we sit here with three boys. Yep. You are Six daughters. He lost count after four though. Is that? No? <laughs> All right. Hello, Justin. How are you? So good to be with you. Good to be with you too. I'm keen to know if you've got a dad joke for us. Well, Elton John's been touring Australia in recent times. Yes. And you know, Elton's known for his dummy spits. Mm-hmm. Yep. Recently at dinner, he uh, had a big confrontation with the waiter and oh. the chef. They put cos lettuce in his salad. He said, I don't eat cos lettuce. They said, why? He said, because I'm a rocket man. (laughs) (laughs) But um, I'm a rocket man. That's going to be in my head for the rest of the day now. All right, Dr. Justin Coulson, let's talk (laughs) parenting. I'm so sorry. (laughs) No, you're not. You're not at all. Don't be sorry. You keep coming back with them, so you're not sorry. (laughs) If you were, you'd change your behaviour. <laughs> All right, let's talk about making sure our kids aren't too spoiled. It is the season to be jolly and generous and our children probably have expectations mm. that they're going to have a full tree of presents. And the reality is even those of us who are not prosperous in Australia are still doing pretty well by world standards. Mm. Uh, we, we live in a remarkably prosperous and abundant yes. society. So, so yeah, and, and children do have expectations. Plus, they know what their friends are getting or they hear about what their friends received. Uh, and, and Christmas for our children sometimes feels like it's all about me, 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 me. What are you getting me? And look, you know, look what's under the tree for me. Uh, so I've worked with a lot of families over the years who have tried to break through this cycle of entitlement and narcissism and selfishness uh, and, and let's face it do you remember what you were like when you were oh, a kid I, mean, I was the worst oh yeah yeah I remember crying on my birthday because my presents weren't good enough he's a December birthday too and, and I got so mum, <laughs> mum went out and bought me a Game Boy wow so the tears worked the tears worked a treat yeah I mean I was genuinely devastated because I felt like on my birthday everyone like this is what I felt that that I was no one cared they were getting to Christmas and so I got these sort of little token no thought into it but I was bought off with a Game Boy <laughs> so maybe it wasn't about the th- thoughts and feelings at all it was just about the stuff and, and and that that's kind of what happens and, and you know what it's like as well when the children when they see their aunties or their grandparents or you know what who, whatever person it is they walk in the door on Christmas Day and the first thing that your kids do even though you've told them not to is they say have you got any presents for me and you're like yeah. stop it <laughs> and then and then what happens is there's this the gift giving process where it's just this flurry of paper going everywhere and yeah. and and it's kind of like a procession of one gift after another after another they look at it for four seconds and they chuck it on the floor so they can open up the next thing and yeah. mm. they just can't get enough yes and when you're a child this is the most exciting thing ever yeah. but as parents we kind of want our children to be a little more restrained and a little more grateful yeah mm. a little more focused on others more focused not on getting but on giving yes so i've got a handful of things that we can do to help our children to be more um, other-oriented. All right. I'm ready to take notes. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love the way she literally yeah. just we've opened up the laptop. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like she's got a t- her typewriter, that little... I mean, we've got, got a process... Ribbon, with ribbon with our, and we've got a process with our boys at Christmas anyway, and they have, have to be quite uh, patient before the, the presents even come out. In fact, two years ago, our son split his knee open on Christmas morning, and it was sort of mid to late morning before we even got back from the hospital for him to... Open presents. But, but I bet he's still open them. <laughs> yes, but they do. It's One at a time. Everybody in the family gets a present. Oh, so slow. Then everybody <laughs> so gets a boring. present. <laughs> and, up. and for us, the reason is simply... With if it's rushed, there is no thank you, there is no gratitude, mm. there is no acknowledgement. But yeah. when it's one at a time, we do not open the next present until they've displayed 
gratitude yeah. and appreciation for the person who's given the gift. Well, now that Susie has flexed her fingers and gotten them ready on I'm the ready. keypad, I'm ready. here's what I'm going to recommend. Uh, I think a folk, you know, this is before Christmas Day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In the lead up to Christmas, I, as a family, focus on service. Yeah. Focus more on giving than getting. Uh, one family I know uh, bakes cookies and takes them down to the local cop shop yeah. and down to the local Ambos and down to the local fireys. When they walk in, there's this look of, Really? Uh, you know, is this poison? Especially at the police station, are you sure this is okay to eat? Yeah. <laughs> but, but they do that so that they can help the children to recognise that there are people in the community who are literally putting their lives on the line to keep them safe. And yeah. Christmas is a nice time to acknowledge that That's and do that. Lovely. I, th- I thought it was mm. beautiful. Yeah. And another family that I know. Uh, really focused just on their neighbourhood. So there was an elderly lady just up the road who they went and looked after her yard in the few days leading up to Christmas because there were going to be some family members showing up and the yard was a bit of a mess. Brilliant. Uh, Another family I know, um, just down the street, a a husband and wife had separated a couple of weeks before Christmas. Um, The the mum was at home with the three kids, absolutely devastated. Mm. Uh, And so this family put together a Christmas hamper and said, we know it's a really hard time, but we want you to know that we're thinking of you. And by the way, maybe you'd like to join us on Christmas afternoon as well. Bring yeah. the kids along and we'll swim in the pool. Oh, lovely. So, so this kind of reaching out and helping, what, what it does is it teaches the children that Christmas is not actually about you, it's about giving joy to the world. Mm. Uh, there's a song about that, I'm pretty yeah, sure. I think I've heard it, yeah. Mm. Um, the, other, the other one that I love when it comes to service to others is just secret Santa drops. This is actually a, a family tradition in my family. Yeah. We, we usually do some home-baked goodies and we drive the car to the neighbourhood where our friends are and we park around the corner and sneak up and bang on the door, leave the goodie, and then we rush to the bushes and hide as they open the door <laughs> and go, oh, mummy, daddy, look what's on. And it's very exciting. The kids just, they, they love it. And, and every now and again we get caught and that's kind of fun as well because then we get to hug our friends and say happy yeah. Christmas. Um, but I want to share a couple of other ideas. I know we've really pushed for time, so I'll, I'll go fairly quickly. Uh, my, my next idea is that we should reduce the quantity of gifts. We don't really have to have a million billion gifts. Yep. Um, the, the other thing that research tells us is that giving experiences is actually better than giving stuff. Uh, when, when you open it, it doesn't necessarily feel better, but when you go and have the experience and then you enjoy the memory it it builds happiness it builds ha- it builds relationships and that's the other thing with experiences is you usually do them with other people yes whereas you get some stuff it's in a cardboard box you go and play with it and and it just doesn't have the same kind of thing so experiences are better than things uh there are there are a couple of other things mm-hmm. just quickly I, I love this one one year for christmas I contacted my siblings. I'm the eldest of six kids. And I said to them, can you just write out 10 special memories with dad? Just on a piece of paper, a couple of lines each. You can be as elaborate in describing that experience as you want, but just 10 special memories of dad. That meant that once all six of us had done it, there were 60 memories of dad. I put it, I put it on the printer, um, nice colourful paper, a different, different colour for each child. Uh, and, and then I rolled them up, sort of scroll-like, and drop them into a jar. When dad, <clears throat> dad's one of those, you know, he shakes the gift, tries to work out what yeah. it is before he opens it. He yeah. couldn't figure it out. He said, it's a jar of something. Uh, opened it up and saw all this colourful paper in a jar, looked at us quizzically, opens the jar, reaches in, pulls out the first piece of paper, reads the little story on it, has a bit of a chuckle, then stops. He looks at us and looks at the jar and then he realises that in that jar is 60 of our favourite memories of time with him and for the next two hours he sat on the couch while Christmas happened around him and pulled memories out and laughed and cried and just lived in his own little cocoon as we as we shared that that experience with him it cost us nothing except for a jar and a little bit of paper but the memory was was profound wow Mm, that's beautiful yeah just joyful Uh, and two other ideas just really quickly uh number one encourage the children not just to say thank you but write thank you notes yeah and lastly give the gift of time because uh, everyone that i talk to all the time when i say how you going they say oh busy Uh, christmas is meant to be a time when we're not even if it's just for the day, even if it's just for the morning or the afternoon, if you're doing shift work, what, whatever it is, give the gift of time. Put your phone away. Just concentrate on each other. It's such a special time. Focus on others. Focus on service. Focus on memories. Focus on experiences. Forget the stuff. Yep. Just be together. Yeah. Dr. Love Justin Coulson, 
What an incredibly powerful session, how to make sure that your child isn't spoiled this Christmas. I love how you're calling our conversation sessions oh, now. Well, <laughs> What's going on here? Well, we're pulling out the black leather couch and there's just, there's just not room for both of us on the same couch. That's the problem. Thanks so much, mate, for your time. Thank you. To find out more info on all of Justin's books, podcasts and programs, you can go online to happyfamilies.com.au and to find out how to have Justin come and speak at your school, organisation or event, go to justincoulson.com.